Hello and welcome to The Skating Lesson. My name is Dave Lees and today I'm thrilled to welcome Maya Brigansova from Sports Rue. Did I pronounce your name correctly? Uh, almost. <laughs> All right, how, okay. How should I say it, right? It's Bagriansova. Maya Bagriansova. Bagriansova. Long Russian surname, you know. Maya Bagriansova. Yeah. All right. Well, you are uh, one of my favorite writers on Sports Rue, uh, my favorite writer on Sports Rue. Uh, can you uh, please explain this beautiful website to us? Because you have told me for a long time that the quotes that we see on Sports Rue from everyone when they are any announcement happens is not actually on sport is from sports room that this is from other people in the ether of Russian figure skating so can you just give us a little bit of background uh it's the biggest Russian sports media outlet mm -hmm. but it kind of aggregates all the news and all the quotes and anything that was said or written regarding figure skating actually about all sports but if we're talking about the figure skating section it's uh everything that is related to figure skating uh they do their own pieces features materials but uh mainly they post different news so when you see something it's not like necessarily being created by sports.ru now how long have you been covering figure skating for uh, a couple of years now. I mean, I've been in journalism for like, what, 10, 15, almost 20 years, but I there was mainly political journalism. So as you may understand, now it's kind of tricky to be involved in something like that in Russia. So I switched to my hobby, my biggest hobby, figure skating, and now I truly enjoy it. How different is figure skating from politics? Uh, <laughs> um, I wish it was more different it differed more because uh i really do not want all those intrigues and you know political things happening but we have what we have probably this is the reason why it's so interesting i know yeah well overnight there's new uh news that came out from the isu that the ban on russia and belarus is going to remain in place and it really seemed as though the russians were confident that at least the juniors would be allowed back for the junior grand prix there were early reports that they have been given provisional allotments about how many athletes would be allowed if the ISU said that they could compete. You know, what did you think of the news overnight? Did you expect it? And what was your- uh, It's not surprising for me. I didn't expect any Russian athletes to be allowed back. I mean, we all know ISU, they never rush with their decisions. Uh, they will definitely wait until other sports federation to, you know, make their decisions first and second i mean has something changed since last year why would the ban be lifted i mean nothing seriously changed and it's a very popular thing in russia a very popular point of view that everybody is already tired and they want russians back and inevitably russian athletes would be um, allowed to compete again and I think many people were sure that it will happen this season, but not me. I, I was I was traveling a lot. I was at, almost at every major uh, figure skating competition last season. And I saw that actually it's not true. But, you know, people in Russia, actually all over the world, they prefer to stick their own dreams and ideas. So probably this is the case. It does seem um, that there was... The ISU seem to be on the fence a little bit. They've had Lekernik at some events and no one knew for sure what that meant. Um, but now the next time that the ISU will discuss this will be in October. So between now and October, do you foresee anything really changing? I don't know. Uh, some people in Russia say that probably there will be some kind of decision in August that there may be um, the I. Uh, International Olympic Committee may release some, you know, details about the recommendations that they release in March, uh, and probably the ISU will call for extraordinary counsel or something like that. I personally do not believe that because I don't see why that should happen. But I mean, I to be honest, no, I don't foresee any changes. I think it will be postponed until October, and I don't even think that something will change in October. But we'll see. It's almost I don't know what five months, four months. I thought it was interesting that this week they were going to meet, but this week, obviously, there was a major dam that was blown up in Ukraine. And I thought this is not good timing for uh, the Russians to be, uh, you know, trying to become back into international sports. Obviously, the Kamila Volyeva case is also going to start in August. Uh, if we if it does. Uh, Do you believe that? 
I'll believe it when I see it. <laughs> but I don't think that that means that there'll be a decision in August. Um, I'm afraid all we will hear is we are gathering the evidences, we are trying to read all the papers. Uh, they are not rushing with that decision either. I don't see that happening. Yeah, and I don't see Russia returning uh, to figure skating before that is uh, settled. I can't see a situation where the Russians are allowed back, but the Camila Valieva doping case is not settled. But that's my personal opinion. I just don't understand. I don't know how the ISU could withstand that amount of backlash that could. Yeah, there are so many factors and so many things that need to happen. Uh, I just don't think it's happening like really soon because it's, I mean, I don't see it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, what do you think it means for the Russian skaters who are in the Junior Grand Prix? Which skaters are you really looking at that are, you know, Arseny Fedotov, you know, he hasn't really had any international experience. There's really a whole generation that's really missing out on international competitions right now. Uh, to be honest, I feel more for seniors mm -hmm. uh, because, I mean, remember when Trusova, Kostarnaya, Sherbakova, their generation came, we were very sorry that COVID took away their chances. Uh, for a big, like, sound career, for a bold career. But we never saw this happening. Uh, the new generation suffers way more. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it's suffering, okay? Suffering is something else, and we see it happening, right? But it's a, it's a drama for them. Of course it's a drama. Because, I mean, they're losing their chances, they're losing their perspectives, they're losing their, I don't know, contracts, but mainly titles, uh, juniors, I still believe that they have chances in the future. I don't see this is happening. This happening for another like what three, four, five years. So juniors, if they remain strong, if they retain what they show now, right? But it's another question. Uh, they will have a chance to shine. But the seniors, I mean, I'm really sad for them. I thought it was a little bit uh, strange last season. If I reflect on it. I thought a long time that we used to have so many stars in Russia, so many personalities. And that's really what, you know, grabs us to the sport. But we really didn't get to meet the new skaters, Petrosian, Akacheva. We really don't know who they are, right? As people, the way we knew Trusova's personality or Kostanaya's. What can you tell us about them? Because we really don't know much about them at all. Um, they're kind of shy. Mm -hmm. uh, they're young and they don't have any international experience and that counts a lot because I remember Camilla, the beginning of her, of her first season internationally, she was very shy, she almost never talked to the journalist, but by the end of the time she was already more confident and we could see something like already understand her personality, right? And those girls, Akativ and Petrosian, uh, they... They, they have their moments in Russian stage, they um, Russian ice, and they're pretty big stars here. Not as big as the previous generation, of course, but it's, you know, the post-Olympic season, people are a little bit tired of, you know, figure skating and sports, sports in general. So I don't know, they're nice, they're nice girls. Um, Patricia seems to be more confident than Sonia, uh, but they're very, very nice girls, all I can say for now. No, was it? One of them won the Russian Nationals, the other one won the Russian Cup Final. Which competition was more prestigious? Because if you think about it, it was almost like two Russian Nationals last season. Uh, Russian Nationals, of course, is tournament number one. But, you know, Russian calendar last season was a little bit tricky, I understand, because they tried to copy the Grand Prix circuit. So we had six Grand Prix and Grand Prix Final, which was not in December, but instead of that in March. Uh, Tricky, right? Uh, but we had two new tournaments, two new competitions that probably, by the way, would be an interesting suggestion for, for an ISU to add to their calendar. We had the um, jumping tournament when all they did was just jumps, actually the quad competition, you may call it. Uh, and then we had the show program tournament, which also was in spring. So only gala uh, pieces, all of them had to be completely new. Nothing could be repeated from the previous shows. Uh, it, it was interesting and it was good for the viewers and for, you know, audience loved it. Uh, so speaking of the Russian calendar, so we had Grand Prix, then Russian Nationals, this jumping competitions, Channel One Cup, which it was also big. It's like Russian team event. They uh, have two teams of Russian athletes. Uh, and then this final Grand Prix final but i think it was mainly actually for money because federation had to compensate loss of income for the skaters 
at the international at the international arena, right? So they had a chance to earn pretty good money. I mean, solid money, I would say. Mm -hmm. Do you think that the skaters are starting to lose motivation at all? Or are these events enough to keep them going? Because at this point, you know, for one season, I could see a moderate interest level uh, for these skaters. But now that they're going to face, you know, another season of this, you know, what do you think it means for someone like Tuk Dimitrova or someone like Voljeva, perhaps? Oh, Lisa is my true love. Uh, mm -hmm. It's the athlete that I feel the most... I mean, I feel so sorry for her because she does not deserve that. And she's a very good person, if you know what I mean. And I really wish um, that she would shine at the Worlds, at all the Grand Prix events. Uh, for her, I mean, she remains in sports. She continues. She doesn't stop. Uh, first season, the season that we had, was kind of, you know, everybody was still expecting international events to be back soon. So it, it was like, uh, let's hold on a little bit. Let's do what we have here in Russia. And when we are allowed back, then we will be ready and, you know, shining. But now I think the frustration comes in, steps in. It's, it's kind of difficult to train to know when you know then there is no worlds, no Europeans, no international travel. I mean, they're always on the go, right? Those athletes, they uh, switch planes starting from October, everybody's flying. And this time it's a little bit, okay, I'm staying at home. I am flying in Russia, I'm changing, I'm going to different cities, but it's all different. And they all shared this. I mean, they said it's kind of different, but good. Good that we still have competitions with, I mean, it is good, right? Because they have their chance to compete. Uh, but I think it, they're getting more and more frustrated. Um, I wouldn't say for everybody, but the top stars, yes, of course, and the coaches and coaches, especially Julin, um, actually say it pretty open because they say we need the, it's, it's all different. It cannot compare. Arena Rodina always says she's not watching any of it. She's not interested. <laughs> But she is not involved in today's figure skating, right? She is a big star, but she's mainly involved in Russian State Duma and, you know, some legislative things. But she is not working in the field. So I'm always interested with that because Arena Renina's daughter uh, is a reporter uh, in the US and has worked for, you know, many more liberal outlets over the years. So it's it spans all uh, political aisles, but it's a very fascinating um you know, you know yeah. sports in Russia has been has always been like a social lift, social elevator, or yeah. how you call it. Uh, it's a chance for you to, uh, I, I don't know, to earn lots of money, uh, to get some political career, to become some kind of sports executive or something. Um, it's a very, I mean, when I look at the U.S. athletes, they have like, they seem to have their like sports life. Mm -hmm. And then normal regular life starts after they're done right not like in russia because they stay within the field unless they go to politics mm -hmm. i think for a lot of americans you know they could go to obviously many stay in coaching but you know we i think we do see that a lot of the skaters who have reached the top you know we see nathan chen uh, at yale um vincent joe you know and, and Brown. they do serious education yes we also have skaters like that by the way like gumenik he mm -hmm. is a really good student, or Simonenko, he is in medical university, he's doing med. I mean, we have our own Nathan Chan, you know? Yeah. Well, can you explain the difference? Because there's always this uh, rumor or suspicion that some of the Russian athletes go to uh, universities where they're just paying for their degree, and then there's also uh, athletes that go to more serious universities. So what is the difference? Uh, they're not even paying for their degree, okay? A Russian... Uh, system of higher education is different. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, it's mainly like free. Mm -hmm. There you can pay, but you also can get some places which are allocated by the state. Uh, but we have this sports university, let's call it this way. And all the athletes, all the Olympians usually go there, like it's their mm -hmm. usual pass. They do not even have the entrance exams because if you are a world champion or the Olympian, uh, you can get there with no tests, no exams, right? They are not very, um, they're not there often, let's say, but they have their diploma, they have their degree, but I wouldn't call it like a real education. Uh, some of them, decide to go to like real serious universities like there's a pair 
uh, guy who, who does pairs in Russia and he's at the very serious math faculty. And actually, I don't know how he manages all that together with the career in Team Russia. But I mean, they have this degree like not doing anything for that. So I wouldn't call it a real education. Is, okay, there was a story a couple of years ago when Alina Zagitova's test scores uh, from, I guess, high school leaked yeah, high school. college. Yeah. What was that? Because, is she in university? What There's always talk about how much she's studying for uh, being a TV presenter. That's one of the favorite topics of the Russian figure skating media is how good she is or isn't at presenting. Yeah, she is in university, I think year two, or even year, I think it's year two. Uh, it's either media or uh, producing, like produce a faculty for media, something like that. Uh, she posts on her social media when she uh, does a diploma or she does some coursework or something. But I mean, I, I cannot say anything because I'm not there with her at the university. Probably it's a serious thing that she's doing. Probably not. Uh, but with all the tours and all the shows and all the TV work, I doubt it's something that requires lots of time from her. But it's not only her case. I mean, she's not a unique figure in this, right? It's just that she's very um, popular and everybody pays attention to that. But yes, she, she does some university degree at the moment. Is she getting better at TV presenting? Because I read so many articles where some of her co-anchors co or co-presenters are kind of evaluating her. Yagudin speaks about how good or, you know, she is or isn't uh, every time that they work together. It's kind of strange. Uh, um, I wouldn't call her, I, I wouldn't call that her strongest ability. I mean, hmm. but she's a nice girl. She's a very beautiful girl. And um, camera loves her, you know? Uh, she looks good and I mean, when she starts speaking, probably, again, it's not her strongest side. But again, she's a nice girl. So mm. let's give her a chance. She yeah. definitely loves it. She enjoys it. Well, another person that was uh, entering the field of journalism is Alexandra Trusova. And she entered university in the spring, but someone you know, pointed out to me that this was a really strange time of year for someone. Yeah, to it is. It is. I mean, you never start studying in spring. It's it's September always, yeah. but it's the best university of the country. It's the best um, media faculty of the country. Uh, I always very I'm always very supportive when sportsmen, when sports people start doing serious education because it's very important for them because, you, you know, uh, when, what time do they have for studying, for learning? They barely visit school. They have home, like home learning and things like that. So the more they study, the better, of course, but I'm a little bit afraid and scared of all this, you know, it's a trend to become a journalist in Russia now among figure skaters. It, it's almost like, I don't know what to do. Oh, I would become a journalist. So it's not that easy, you know? <laughs> I think it's interesting that she's starting in journalism because obviously her family had um, disagreements with Channel One uh, last year, and this is they clearly have disagreements with media coverage. Yeah, but she works closely with biggest Russian TV sports network, Match. Mm -hmm. So uh, she's one of their stars. And I mean, if she wants to become a real journalist, I can only support that. But rumors are that it was just her parents' decision for her to have serious education, which is also not bad, you know? But she must be so in love and happy in her personal life right now. I mean, we'll see if she shows up at the university in September. What do you think about her skating future? Because she was just listed on the national team for this season, uh, but there's a no, lot- No, she wasn't. No, she wasn't. Sure. She's not on the list, but there is some kind of, you know, uh, B list. Yes, yeah. some kind of national reserve or something, but she's not on the national team. You know, we have different system in Russia. You have envelopes yeah. in the US yeah. and we have like national team, six people in each discipline and she's not there. This year, it was pretty honest, like top six from Russian nationals went to national team. Mm -hmm. So many good skaters went up there and Koleda and Mark Kondratuk, nobody who actually participated and got some real good place at the nationals um made it to the national team uh but i mean if i had to bet money on that i wouldn't i don't think trusov is back but it's mainly i think because of international absence of international events mm -hmm. she she got silver at the olympics what's the motivation for her to start doing the russian uh, competitions i mean she tried the best so mm -hmm. i think she kind of 
she needs some extra motivation because she still does the qu- the solid quad lats mm-hmm. and i'm sure that if she was interested she would be able to pull a really good act well i i would say that her motivation is to maintain her celebrity uh in russia because obviously she makes money off of her name and there are always new stars emerging i mean how is skating still as popular as it was? There were a lot of reports this year that Two Breeds of Show didn't sell well. Um, it was not only Two Breeds of Show. It's We have too many shows in Russia. It's mm-hmm. not like in the US. It's not like Stars on Ice and basically yeah. that's it, right? We have Plushenko shows and we're talking about like 20, 30 shows a year. We have Averbuch, whose shows are also very popular and they are doing constant tours around Russia. So it's not only you know big cities they go to very small cities with their shows and there's Tatiana Navka right and she has all the state financial support and she has lots of shows and they're very very popular especially in summer uh and we also have a Terry show so it's just too many Mm -hmm. people and I mean the economic situation is Russia is not that like ideal at the moment and you have many shows and probably you're not going to visit all of them even if you are a big figure skating fan so it's a little bit i would say it's not as popular it's definitely not as popular as it was uh, at the medvedev was times mm-hmm. uh, but now it's even less popular than at the time of trusova and kastaranaya mm-hmm. but you know life is a little bit about you know life now is a little bit about some other things and things happening you know in politics and between ukraine and russia they they attract more attention i would say yeah, it, it will be interesting to see what happens a year from now. If you look at Two Breeds' trajectory before uh, the Olympics, she was becoming a real business person in Russia, and it seems somewhat different. Uh, uh, regarding yeah. Two Breeds, I mean, she is about to receive a new skating ring. Mm-hmm. End of this year, probably beginning of next year. It's big, it's brand new, lots of space, and you saw that she started recruiting new skaters, right? Yeah. Pairs, Bekov and Kozlovsky, changed the uh, coaching teams and now they're in Moscow. Uh, she recruited a number of pretty promising juniors. Mm-hmm. Probably you haven't heard of them yet, but they're pretty interesting. They are now in Novogorsk, mm-hmm. the camp mm-hmm. next to Moscow. I mean, we'll see because nobody knows what's going to happen, but she definitely has her interest in Russia, in Moscow at the moment. And their team seems to be together like Dudakov, Gleihingaus and her. So we'll see. How interested do you see her in coaching right now? She wasn't very present at the competitions last season as much as usual. You know, she seemed to have less of an intense presence uh, with some of the skaters. I mean, Terry is used to getting gold and number one all the time. So I think for her, it's a bit of a challenge to sit next to a skater who is not number one next to top skater not not the top skater um i actually um i mean i'm not her and i'm not even close to her but all i can see is that she's a little bit losing interest in what's happening around her of course her daughter and you know the ice dance situation is different because it's her personal interest but it's like she's a little bit tired it could be post-olympic thing right because she, everybody had so many emotions and things happening at the Olympics and Camila's case and Trusova's breakdown and everything. Probably she's a little bit tired, but I don't see that figure skating in general is as exciting for her as it used to be before. Mm-hmm. Well, let's talk about her daughter. Uh, this week it was announced that her daughter is going to be skating for Georgia. This has been quite the evolution of country hopping over the last year. And it's something where you know, viewers in the U.S. haven't necessarily paid as much attention to Russia since the situation in Ukraine. There's been kind of uh, an askance view. So can you break down what actually all has happened in the Diana and Gleb saga since they represented Russia at the Olympic Games? Because this has been quite the story, and I believe you referred to me as a bloodhound uh, on this, (laughs) which is not the worst thing that's ever been written about me in the Russian press, but one of the more memorable things. Um, I think you have a lot to do with all that happened today on it, right? (laughs) Uh, I mean, it's a long story short. I mean, uh, she made it to the Olympics, and that was not a very fair choice. I mean, I'm not Federation, but it was pretty scandalous at the Russian nationals. I believe she was going to do it. I said a year and a half 
before. Yeah, I know, but we still hope that it's not going to happen, right? I mean, it's not, not, it's not like we didn't want to see particular this couple. It's just that we wanted to see some fair game, fair play, right? She, excuse me, you have to look at history. She took her daughter to Igor Spielband, who is very known with judges. And then she had Alexander Julin choreograph for her pair out of nowhere. And he was suddenly her best friend in the press. So she had two political powerhouses helping her daughter. You know what? We definitely need to tarry in Russian politics. Yes. He definitely <laughs> knows her way, right? Yes. Um, so Diana and Glav went to Beijing. Um, mm. That's some performance there. And then uh, war breakdown, right? Mm. So it was obvious that Russian athletes are banned and they have no future at the international arena for who knows how long. So then... All the other news came from you, Day, right? <laughs> so. <laughs> Not all. I mean, sh there was some situation, you know, the Georgian Federation president spoke a little bit about being approached by a Terry a year ago, or there were discussions that had happened, but those, you know, didn't uh, come. She said her. that if a Terry yeah. seriously approaches her, she would support her, right? Yeah. But a Terry uh, is half Georgian, so they have all the reasons to be uh, part of Team Georgia. Team Georgia is not big, so there is space for Diana there. Um, I, I'm just personally happy that they're not a Russian ice dance team anymore because it was too many intrigues and too many scandals and Russian ice dance field is so problematic. And so, I mean, so much challenge there at the moment that we don't need more scandals. So I'm happy she's there. I'm happy she's in Team Georgia. I'm happy for Team Georgia because it's a good chance for them because I'm absolutely sure that um, Atari is ambitious. It's interesting because last year so many things happened at the Montclair Ice Rink regarding Russian ice dance. We had Nikolai who was there to choreograph programs and he was speaking, you know, at the part. Annabelle had a different partner at that time last year. Um, he, you know, once Russia was banned, you know, he had contacted U.S. figure skating. Terry had already contacted U.S. figure skating. This I know nothing about. I mean, I'm even on another continent. Yes. All I can say is that there was something, there was something happening there, was something going on. And clearly there were some, you know, strings pulled and they were trying different federations because Gleb was pretty open. There was an interview uh, in December, last December, where he said pretty open that, we are aimed at the international competitions. We are trained to participate in big events. And who would say a bad word about us? I mean, all the all the athletes have the same mind, right? Uh, so he, it's just that it was not a very nice situation because nobody was saying anything and they got their release, what, end of May? And nobody was announcing that. And only after the information leaked, um, Federation had uh, an official announcement. So it's just, it doesn't look like a very clean story and I'm very happy it's over. They had some very um, high profile US judges uh, on their speaking on their behalf last year. There was a meeting at uh, the Chesapeake uh, dance competition and it was at the time that Green and Parsons were leaving Kilyakov. So it's very interesting. Obviously Kilyakov's son represents Israel and they had a tryout with Sean Redstat who also you know regularly monitors the Israeli team. So it was very interesting uh, to see also, we had Tatiana Tarasova visit um, the Israeli Federation last summer to get her winter boots. Um, I think she said that's why she was there. It was a very interesting summer, but how well do you think that they'll do in international competition? Oh, who knows? Uh, I mean, I don't think they have the support they would have if they were competing for Russia, mm -hmm. but uh, they've been skating and practicing this free dance for almost over a year now. So it must be a very good skate when we finally see it. Uh, I, I regret they left Spilband mm -hmm. because that would be, that would mean a, like better chances for them. Mm -hmm. But I'm not a very big fan of this couple, to be honest, in terms of skating. They're not my favorite team. And I don't think that Georgia would provide very much support for them in terms of judges. So, I mean... We'll see, but this is not definitely, this is definitely not the couple I'm going to be following, like, most of all. There are way more important ice dances. 
I've always been interested in following them, not because I believe that they have an extraordinary ability. I believe that they show what can be achieved off the ice in uh, ice. Yeah, behind, behind the scenes, yeah, like in the car. saw how Terry got them to the Olympics with scores at the Warsaw Cup, and they set a precedent at not yeah, even- this at- was ridiculous. This was ridiculous. I don't think it's their fault, like uh, the skaters, but the situation was really bad and- it, it didn't contribute, it didn't, I mean, Russian ice dance didn't profit of that. It's, it was a bad case for figure skating, that's for sure. I want to see how strong a Georgian federation can be in ice dance. And I think Terry will teach us whether or not it's possible. We don't know uh, what she is capable of, but I certainly think that Terry won't just sit and mm -hmm. let things happen. But right. to be honest, I wish Georgian team all the luck because the more competition we have um, at Europeans, the better, because mm -hmm. figure skating is not as popular uh, at Europeans as it used to be. And if we have more teams that can compete for the Olympic team event, the better. I mean, competition is, is good. So hopefully they have a good team and Gubanova is there, right? Maurice quit, but there are some other skaters. So... I really, I'm really happy for the team. If they can put themselves on the map of figure skating, oh, I'll be happy. Are there any Georgian figure skaters at the international level who are actually from Georgia? Uh, Marisi is Georgian. Uh, was second, he born in Moscow or is he born in Georgia? He was, I, I don't, I'm not very sure, but I think he was born in Moscow and he grew up in Moscow, but he's Georgian. Uh, Nika Yagadze also, the second boy from the team is Georgian. And I think he was even born in Georgia. Uh, the uh, uh, another ice dance team, Revia Kazakova Revia uh, boy is Georgian. Uh, the junior, a good junior girl for Team Georgia, Inga Gurgenidze with a triple axel, by the way, she is Georgian. I mean, um, it's not like they are recruiting just somebody who can skate. They pay attention to the ethnicity, to the roots. That's for sure. Because there are some federations that have been really accused of you know, importing Russians, the Hungarian Federation, obviously there's been yeah. that kind of a scandal. Israel has always been accused of importing skaters. Yeah, uh, but you know, it's the history, so many Russian immigrants there and it's kind of, you know, what would you say? Do not stop doing figure skating because you're Russian? No, I don't think it's, yeah. yeah. I, it's just the, the way that the game works. You know, if you were number five in Russia, you could be number one somewhere else. So it's- Yeah, it but yeah. 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 Um, what do you make of Alexander Julin? So he has become a real powerhouse again uh, in ice dance over the last several months. Now, I think it's interesting because the athletes have to be neutral. If they're ever allowed to be back in international competition, the IOC has talked about neutrality. But Julin has made a lot of comments being pro-war, being anti-Ukraine. Mm -hmm. And people are starting to point out that maybe his athletes can't actually train with him if they ever want to have a hope of returning to international competition. You know, figure skating in Russia is state supported, 100%. It's not like you can come go and say, um, I'm going to switch coaches and I'm going to change the rank. It's kind of being decided by the Federation because the Federation is paying for that. Um, Julien now has all, almost all Russian, best Russian ice dance teams on, on his rink. Um, I think it's sad. The things he's saying are really sad and disgusting. Uh, I don't think that the athletes trained with him should uh, be punished for that. Because again, it's kind of, you know, not a choice probably, but Julien definitely means the best chances to get that only Russian quarter, which is left for each discipline, right? Even if Russians are back, allowed back, uh, there's only one quarter. And there's no chance any other coach is having this quarter over Julin. So if you want to at least be in the game, you had to switch teams. I think this is what happened to Stepanova Bukin. Uh, we'll see how everything works because there's another very promising Russian ice dance team that trained with Angelika Krylova, Angelova I really like them. They're juniors. They're already, they used to be juniors, right? They are really good, interesting, and they have their own, they're different. So mm -hmm. I would be following them big time. Do you anticipate them eventually moving to Julin or, or what do you think? It seems oh, like- Oh, I wish not. I hope not. Um, because when you have all the eggs in the same basket, it doesn't make 
much sense. I mean, we see this happening to the Montreal Academy, <laughs> but still, Julien, I, I'm not a very big fan of uh, his programs of what he does for his skaters. He used to be a great skater and he's probably a good coach, but I I really regret that Stepanova Bukina there because they could do, I think they could be, they could do more interesting stuff. No. Last season, Natalia Linichuk returned to Russia. Is she participating in coaching at all? Is she working with the Federation? Not that I heard of. She is present at some competitions and some show tournaments, but as a guest. I haven't heard of any cooperation going on between her and any other Russian coaches. I think she kind of a little bit lost connections to coaches who are actually very present at the field. So I haven't heard of anything. Well, you mentioned the Montreal, uh, the International Academy of Montreal for ice dance. What do you make of their stable of skaters right now? You know, they had so many top teams for so long, uh, Virtue Moyer, Papadakis and Cizeron, but it seems like they have many teams that are close to the top, but they're really lacking the dominant force that they once had, in my opinion. Which is good, right? Now they have to fight for their way to the top again. And it's interesting. I'm a big fan of the school. I love the way they do business. I like the way they create different routines and programs for so many dance teams. Uh, but I always, always think that competition is best and better for the sports. And uh, Barbara Fazakali doing so different things for um, the Italian ice dance team. I mean, the more competition, the better. The fact that they don't have a clear leader, like a number one style, like Virtue Moir were, were, I mean, it, I think it's a chance for many teams um, at that rink. The Canadians, uh, the Brits. Uh, so we'll see. It's, it's going to be very interesting. I love ice dance. I truly love ice dance. I'm a big fan. So we'll see. What do you make of the Korean team? They're one that I really I love them. Yeah, yeah, I love them. I saw them last September. They were here in Riga for the Junior Grand Prix. They're very interesting. They're very powerful. Uh, they're fast. Um, and they showed a very like grown up skating. It was not a junior skate that I saw. I think they have very good future. Now, what do you make of the junior world champions from the Czech Republic? They are one of the most, I think, talented teams, and they have not gone to Montreal yet. Um, oh, they're, they're staying. I hope that they stay with Sonny because uh, they're both Czech teams there with him, uh, the uh, ex juniors and the Natasha Uh They're very powerful. They're very, very fast. The way they skate, their edges, they remind me of uh, Medicine Hubble, you know? really, really powerful skating. I would work on choreography a little bit, but they are different and that's very important, right? You don't want to see 10 clones clones of Papadaki Cizerong on the ice and they are different and that's very good for ice dance because you have different, so different like a thousand times already, but this is very important to see yes. different clones on the ice. Yeah, I, I agree. My I is definitely on them. Can you explain what happened with the Czech team that almost happened for Montreal with Dario Chirizano? So he had actually sought a release from Russia. And why was Diana released, but Dario not? Nobody knows. Mm -hmm. um, he, he has an Italian passport. Uh, he has an Italian dad. And actually, we, we thought that he would go for Italy, but that didn't happen. So he found this girl from Czech Republic and they decided to skate for Czech Republic and uh, they kind of supported that. But Russia did not give them a release so they could not uh, do this this season, the, the coming season. I don't think it's fair because Diana got their release and definitely the amount of money invested into Diana and Gleb uh, was way higher than it was invested in, that was invested in Dario. But on the other hand, they are a new team. They need time to skate together. And probably this year that they have to sit until the, let's hope first of all, that the quarantine is going to be one year instead of two. And Diana's case would help them in this. And probably they need this year. And if they're good, probably Montreal will take them on a permanent basis. I like him. I like the way he skates. He's actually one of the best Russian boys in ice dance. And I wish he has his career 
a very successful career and we'll see him on international stage. Yeah, he did actually tried out with Daria Usashova a couple months ago. We read that she skated um, with him, but it was I practice. Never, I never heard of that, like in terms of 100%. They say that they had some kind of tryouts, but I cannot confirm that. We do see her skating a little bit. Uh, I know she posts updates on her Telegram, although she posted one yesterday without any jumps. And I wasn't I saw surprised. her at the show in March, in Mos no, in May, in May, in Moscow, Avir Book Show. She had a piece there. Um, something is lost in her skating. It's not as fresh as it used to be. Uh, I, it's a very complicated topic for me because her and Kromich, uh, it's a sad story because they deserved another future. They didn't deserve this. I mean, I'm not sure whether we can say deserve in sports because it's not a fair thing, but they had very good chances to shine bright, but they were always like, you know, spare, like book for <laughs> Prince Harry. Uh, they were never considered seriously. Um, and this bad accident, both with Maya and Dasha, I think, it doesn't allow to count on any successful career in the future. Dasha posts a lot of updates on her Instagram uh, with her jumps, triple or even triple, triple. But I don't know. I'm not sure she can put this together into routine and for the competition. It looks like she is at the showcase showing mm -hmm. some other, I don't know, teams or federation what she's capable of. But I'm not sure somebody would be happily taking her in terms of her health because her injury was really bad. And is Maya I mean, and all? We saw updates a while ago from Maya, but it's been quieter lately. They say she's in Novogorsk at the moment with the Terry's team. No, it's absolutely quiet with her. Nobody knows what happens and what condition she is in right now. And is she gonna continue or not? But you know what? We definitely have this problem with Russian skaters. They are not ready to, call it a night it's like to finish their career because all they've been trained for was successful competition and competing competing performing uh they do not know how to live another life they are not trained for it um, i spoke a million times to montreal people from the im academy and they keep saying that we are trying to prepare our athletes that there is life behind figure skating and i wish the same happened to russian figure skating because uh it's not the case. They're scared to be over. They're scared to be done. They don't know what to do. They're not prepared. They're not equipped for real life. And it feels like they're sticking to the figure skating as the only thing they know. So probably they had a chance to start a new life, but they stick into the old one. There are so few skaters who actually retire. I mean, Zagitova, has she retired yet? Officially not. Medvedeva, is she retired? Remember, it was like, in this Friends series, we were on a break. So <laughs> she is on a break. Yes. A, yeah. Is Sotnikova still on a break? Who? Sotnikova? Yeah. Uh, I, I don't remember any official declarations, but it's not like it's required from them. They are not receiving any state funding. Uh, they are not in the national team. Uh, only, I think so, only Stanislava Konstantinova said that she's done. Uh, but not Zagitova, not Medvedeva, not, I don't think even Sotnikova. What about Sherbakova? You know, it seems as though, it still is covered in the press by some reporters as though she would compete this year. Obviously, I don't believe that we will ever see Anna Sherbakova compete at a Russian cup, but she was on that same reserve list uh, that we saw Trusova on. Uh, she is the current Olympian champion, right? So she, the moment she wants to come back, she would be allowed. Um, I think Anna is a, a very lucky example of being lucky in today's figure skating for a Russian skater. She had all the titles that she dreamed of, and she is now in a very unique position. She has nothing more to wish for. I don't think, I don't see why she would like to return. I mean, she has chances to get to good university. She is a star of all Russian shows. She is a very, you know, she's a very smart girl. Anna, he, when she talks, probably you heard her talking. She is a smart, really, really smart girl. She went to a good school and she, her 
parents always emphasize that education is a very, very important part of life. She is in, on good terms with pretty much everyone. She is both in Nafka show and Averbuk show. And that's a unique case, you know, because they're kind of rivals. Uh, I don't, I don't, actually, I'm sure that the everything she wants to pursue in life she will be successful. I just hope that she would not go to politics and not sit in Russian State Duma. That's my biggest wish in terms of figure skating. She will go to a real university, is what you were saying. Yeah, yeah. I hope that she will go to real university because she is very smart. She deserves that. Probably she one day can change the Russian Figure Skating Federation and do something about it. But I just hope that she finds her place in like, I don't know, real life and she'll be successful. What do you expect for Camila Valieva in the future? Because, you know, she, her case is still ongoing. Uh, obviously, it seems like the Russian Federation would have an interest in keeping her skating. But last season, she was already starting to be surpassed by Akacheva Petrosian. How long do you think she can remain at the top for? Um, I think that Camila is a truly dramatic figure in figure skating. I wouldn't, I'm not among those who call her a doper. Um, I'm still waiting for the official investigation to be over. Uh, she is definitely a generational talent. She is very gifted and it's such a sad story that happened to her. Uh, look at her, she obviously grown up, but she can still do quads and triple axel. And she would be, I think she would stay in figure skating for long and she, we would see her and her brilliant career if not for that case. Mm. She's staying, that's for sure. And when she stayed for the last season for the Russian uh, national circuit, I was a little bit, I had some doubts why she needs that, but it definitely contributed to her maturity. She is so different now. She speaks so differently. She is very confident. She is very, um, when she speaks to the media, it's not like a small girl speaking to big people, to big grown up adults anymore. She is very confident. And I hope, to be honest, um, the best case scenario is that she probably would, give, would get some penalty and uh, she would be disqualified for some time and she can sit this disqualification and come back and show everyone that she, what she's capable of because she is truly a beautiful skater. And even if something happened there, um, I don't think it's very fair to make Camilla the only responsible person for that. I don't believe that she was doing anything that the other skaters weren't. I will put it that way. I think that whatever happened to her, and that's my personal opinion, and from everything that I know is that, you know, whatever happened, um, I think that she was not the only one, but perhaps the only one who tested positive. So. I, I, no, I know nothing about what happened there behind the closed doors is that it's the only thing I want to emphasize is that, Probably, I mean, everybody deserves a second chance. And probably Camila as a skater deserves this even more. And probably figure skating deserves her to be back because she would, I mean, there is a personality behind her. There is a story. I'm sure there will be movies about her in the future. I know, I know what I'm saying is kind of controversial for American listener. Mm -hmm. um, I don't support doping or anything happening, but I truly believe she deserves a second chance and I enjoy her on the ice. She's really, really beautiful. Yeah, I'm interested to see what happens. She's certainly one of the most intriguing skaters to watch. I do think yeah. that whatever happens- and You know what, this sport deserves uh, stories that would attract viewers, right? Our biggest concern, I know this is the same about you and me, is that figure skating uh, goes through some challenging time. Nobody is interested anymore. And probably if Camilla's case attracted some extra attention, probably it was worth it. I know it sounds strange, but we really need more interest in the sports. I was talking to a couple people last night about the interest in the sport and that about uh, whether the rules need to change and you know, emphasize more artistry. I certainly think that we used to know skaters' personalities and their stories uh, so much more. And that's part of the draw to this. And now Camila has a story. I mean, I'm intrigued to see what happens with her. One way or another, I'm fascinated uh, by yeah. her new participation in the sport. What do you make of this new ISU report that came out? Uh, we saw yesterday, there were a lot of quotes um, about it. Uh, the financials were not great. Uh, 
without um, the Russians' participation, but also the Japanese market is not what it was, especially with the retirement of Yuzuru Hanyu. Um, I spend less night with this, you know, this is the report. Yes. Sure. <laughs> I was writing a piece on that. Um, yeah. I wouldn't say that the figures are bad because of absence of Russian skaters. Yeah. Uh, when you dig into the figures, you see that it's not because of that. It's just the overall interest in sports is declining. And they say, I mean, the ISU itself, themselves, they say that, you know, the biggest sponsors like the Google or Amazon or Facebook, they're not interested in, it's a very niche sports and they need to change something. They need to make it interesting and attractive and attract new audiences. Actually, the uh, losses that they reported mainly arise from the um, financial market depression. It turns out it was a new thing for me that ISU has a very, um, it's huge uh, bond, perf bond portfolio. So they suffered from the recession and their losses mainly arise from that. Of course, the Japanese market, and they emphasize in the report that Japanese market is their number one market, not Russia, not States, obviously. Um, I just hope that they find some solution because so far it doesn't look like they know what they're doing. I, I still continue to think that they need to have some sort of professional competitions. You mentioned the show tournament, but we have Yuzuru Hanyu who's doing quads in every show. Nathan Chen still skates, not at the same level because he's at the university, but yeah. those are two skaters that I think if they had an incentive, we would see them participate. I would love to see them, you know, compete against each other and see. You know, Japanese fan base of Yuzuru Hanyu did not disappear. It just brings it, its money to Hanyu's shows instead of yeah. ICU. Yeah. So if ICU could work some kind of you know uh, agreement with Yuzu or make him an ambassador, because he is a true ambassador of figure skating, right? Uh, that would help the sport a lot, I'm sure. I don't know about Russia. Every competition, if he is not going yeah. to uh, participate, they should have him as the chief commentator for every yeah, country, something. right? Yeah. Just uh, as the ambassador, because he has a very solid and like stable fan base that has not disappeared. Uh, the same thing about Russia. I just think that all the, um, you know, Medvedeva, Zagitova, and Trusova, they could like do the warm up or something like ambassadors for figure skating because um, people know personalities and they. It's very sad that personalities and like real stars they are disappearing and they're not being replaced. So hopefully ISU will work the way, find the way to you know, do something about it. Yeah, I think it also, one of the things that we didn't talk about a lot last season though, is that Yuma Kagiyama was starting to develop as a emerging star in the sport. Yeah. And as soon as he was gonna reach his top season, he was very injured. So Shoma didn't really have the same level of competition uh, within Japan. I think it would be interesting to watch Shoma and Yuma battle for the Japanese title. Yeah, it, yeah. yeah it, I'm, I'm not sure if we see the same duel in ladies competition, women competition, uh, but we'll see because again, the stronger competition is, the more interesting it is, the more viewers it attracts, the more money comes to ISU. So what are you looking know. forward to for the current season internationally? Do you have your eye on any of the single skaters or any of the matchups? Uh, to be honest, I'm very curious about the new uh, American Ice Dance team, the Kolesnik uh, Zingas one, uh, because they're with Spilbent. And I really think that he knows how to pull the best out of a, of his Ice Dance teams. Uh, so I'll be following them. Interesting. Uh, very interesting of what happens with the Montreal Ice Dance teams, uh, the La Joie Laga, the Canadians, the, uh, so there. In, of course, Ilya Malinian. I think actually he can be the one who attracts more interest for the U.S. audience, right? If you if you have a new, I don't know, prodigy, a new incredible. I mean, he's an incredible talent, right? If he if he remains as interesting as he used to be in terms of his jumps, probably there will be more people visiting. Uh, the arenas. I don't know. What do you think about him and the perspective? He hasn't been, and, and his agent will tell you, you know, he has not been promoted, but that's really the fault of U.S. figure skating. They are in a leadership, you know, vacuum issue. They have a new CEO. They did not promote Ilya Malinin or his quad axle. It was a huge missed opportunity. 
Uh, and they because that was big, you know. Was it was big, but no one in America thing. knows about it. No one knows that he did that. It wasn't on the Today Show, a big you know morning show here. It wasn't. I, I think honestly, if I were running U.S. Figure Skating's marketing campaign, I would have that as a paid Instagram, Facebook post, so that the whole world knows about it. We didn't have audiences at um, you know U.S. nationals. It was really pitiful, and it was a real. A marketing disaster. U.S. figure saying that they, they let that go, and I think that that was a huge problem. I mean, you have a historic event like that yeah. in a vacuum, and no one knew about it. And there were so many things that they could have done, and it just shows how inept. And we talk about how U.S. figure skating, uh, ISU needs to adapt to a digital world. Well, U.S. figure skating is behind the ISU in that, and that was a huge issue this year. Okay, well, also, well the Russian Federation then, huh? <laughs> also, I think it's interesting that. You know, people will say that when we report on the news that we're very scandalous, you got one of the most controversial quotes this season from an American skater, which is not done because they spoke out, but she did it in the Russian press. And it was Isabel DeVito's coach speaking oh, about gosh. puberty and butter on the bread. And can you please be, I didn't even know how to word this because it was so controversial in the U.S. to speak about such a topic. And you speak to everyone and, and got the coach uh, to discuss this. Uh, you know, I love to talk. <laughs> 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 no, it's just that uh, Isabel seems to be the new Olympian, Olympic hope for the mm -hmm. US, right? But we saw that with Elisa Liu and we saw that happening. Uh, we saw that, you know, passing. Um, I, I'm not sure if Isabel's I don't know how to put this. Uh, I'm not sure that Isabel is as passionate about figure skating mm. as her coaches are. Or mother, potentially. I, I don't know about mother, but she is a very nice girl. She works hard. Uh, she does everything she can. But I'm afraid that she's being pushed a little bit too much. Mm -hmm. And probably she would be fed up. One day she would be saying that, okay, I'm fed up. That's enough. Um, and I'm always a fan of long careers to see how, you know, um, I, I started liking the way Alina Zagidova skated the very last season that she was skating, because we finally could see something behind that choreography, something that she, she was saying something, there was something on the ice, and then she was done. So uh, I hope to see more of Isabel, and I hope that she would not break, neither mentally nor physically, on her way to the top. Yeah, it's interesting. Isabel is a dramatic figure and often in the practice session. So there was a clip of her um, on US Nationals practice. She fell and was crying during practice. Also, she's known to miss practices at big competitions. And last season, both in Colorado and at her home rink, there were a lot of videos of her laying on the ice. You know, she would fall and stand there for extended periods and people were wondering if she was being pushed or injured or stressed and then um, I was there uh, at the Worlds in Saitama in Japan. I was there at the mix zone um, where Isabel didn't do well right there, right? Um, not Okay, let's put it this way. Not as it was expected of her. Uh, but she managed to pull herself together and go there to the mix zone and show up and speak to the journalists. And it was very, very hard for her, I'm sure. But she is a fighter. So mm -hmm. she's learning how to overcome all that. I'm sure it's not easy for her, and I'm sure she is probably having too much on her plate. And very, it's very hard to be, you know, number one hope for your national team, um, like new Michelle Kwan and things like that. I'm sure it, it's very hard mentally, but hopefully there will be people around her, and there are people around her already who can give her true support and not only expect results of her. I'm curious to see if she'll stay with her coach. There's been a lot of criticisms of her jump technique, especially uh, as she grows about whether or not it's sustainable. So it's one of the things. Yeah, the way she prepares for the jump, it is not beautiful, but she is fast. I mean, she's very, she skates well. She looks a little bit like Sherbakova on ice, uh, but she has potential. Of course she has potential. And I don't know, probably they should, I mean, I'm not her coach, I'm not her coaching team, but if they attract some more probably specialists and to see and help them, I don't know. Alisa had to switch from Lupetsky, remember? Mm -hmm. uh, which as far as I understand was not her decision. But 
I mean, again, we'll see. It's a very we'll see podcast today, right? <laughs> I think as we wrap things up, the biggest we'll see. How about Oyana Kostranaya in pairs? You know, this has been mm -hmm. the most intriguing story since the Olympics. Can you please take her to your national team? I want her to compete somewhere. She would add a lot of intrigues that we would take at this point. We could. <laughs> she is engaged. She is pair um, yeah. yeah, the problem with Elona is that she is doing only what she's truly interested in. Mm -hmm. If she's excited about something, she would be successful. The moment she loses interest in something, okay, that's that's it. That's the end. I don't know how long she will be very enthusiastic about pairs. She's in love. She's skating with her fiancé. Um, I don't know. Again, I'm really happy that she didn't quit and she stays in the sport because she is really beautiful on the ice. And now when you see them practicing together or doing some show numbers, um, she's good. Mm -hmm. I, I'm just afraid that she has zero future in Russian national team mm -hmm. and she doesn't have patience enough to wait for two or three years. So that's why I hope some other federation would offer her something because she is stronger than pairs in many European countries. Let's put it this way. I don't think we've seen the last of her. Whatever she does, I don't think that she's gonna go quietly. I don't know if this is gonna be her last partner. Yes, they're <laughs> engaged, but you know, <laughs> who knows what can happen. But you and see, that's another personality. Something we definitely need in this sport. Well, I think her partner is also intrigued because apparently he has um, a matching tattoo with the skater from Poland, Katja Kurakova, who commented on their engagement post. So this is a very intriguing story. And I think that but that's kind of that's more of personal life. Yes. If we, if we stay on the ice, yeah. I still think they both are very interesting. And I mean, there are not many um, singles who single skaters who turned to pairs and became successful. So probably a successful story like that would be of some use for some skaters. I want to know if they're going to wind up at a top pair school. I think that if they want to compete, they'll have to go somewhere eventually. And I don't believe he ended with Moskvina on great terms. If you read the interviews, but you know what? Russian pair field is very competitive and very strong. And Aliona would probably be not even making it to top 10. Not this season, but she has a lot of talent. Um, I have less um, optimism for her partner because she is stronger than he is. At the moment, we'll see what happens, but at the moment. Um, so why would some successful Russian coach take them for some, I don't know, some... I don't think many Russian coaches see their potential and their perspectives. There are more pairs, pair teams that they can work with. So again, please, somebody take them, take Costa Maya. What if a boy becomes available? You know, what if a, a top boy has an injured partner? Could you see? Yeah, but Aliona is not the best Russian pair girl. There are way more who are, who's been trained in pairs and who can skate Think better. Kubridza is now becoming a pair coach. She has managed to accomplish <laughs> injure. How many single skaters has Terry Tudbaridze injured? But do you really think that Terry Tudbaridze would take Kostanai as a pair skater? <laughs> I don't know. It's a new world. How many times did she take her back? We, we can have a new poem. You know, she likes to quote the Russian poets, maybe. I think that just they're so right for each other. I think that this deserves to have. I would like to see Trusova back as well. And maybe Gilena with the mother who wanted to coach with the Terry. I think, or we'll so you want everybody on a Terry's list, right? <laughs> well, we never really got the real story of why Gilena left Tuberiza when her mother wanted to coach with them, and they went to the Plushenka Academy. And I, do you think that Plushenka will remain as a top coach in Russia this season? I hope so. Mm -hmm. Again, because somebody has to balance a Terry, and. Mm -hmm. He has some administrative powers and he is definitely passionate about sports and passionate about his athletes. And he's very supportive. And I don't know if you heard, if you noticed, but he is very supportive in Kiss and Cry. He is definitely on their side. Sometimes he says 
some things that are not liked by Federation, but only because he is really, really passionate about his skaters. So I hope he stays in the field um, and I hope that we will see some good performances of Muravyova, his top senior girl. So I don't think she is the most interesting. I think Zhilina has a more interesting- No, we're talking about, you know, seniors, uh, yeah. because when it comes to juniors, there's always a very big question if they survive puberty. I mean, in terms of sports and ice and everything, because we have this, you know, Russian figure skating is some kind of juice maker because mm -hmm. it squeezes them. Um, and then I don't know how everything's gonna work now when the age limits uh, are lifted, so. And there are many argue that his technique is better than Dudikov's technique. So in terms of puberty, so I think it'll, we'll see. Again, 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 we'll see. We have to rename your show, you know? We'll see. We well, this <laughs> show. <laughs> <laughs> I am, yes, I, I'm curious to see, but I want to see what happens with Plushenka this season. Do you think he will get into pair skating? Oh, I just hope he gets some success with the singles first. Mm -hmm. and uh, then can start thinking of something else. We don't need an empire. We need uh, a successful coach who can uh, show some competition and rivalry with the Terry. So, because, you know, uh, many poles is better than one. So I just hope- well, Lena and Mishin can't coach forever. So they need another, you know, school. So we have to- um, I think that some uh, students, ex-students of Mission can um, do something for his school. And St. Petersburg will remain as a figure skating uh, place. But, you know, so much depends on the international competitions now, whether Russian, Russia is allowed back or not, and when this happens. Because, of course, it's the big, coming back to the beginning of our talk, it's the biggest motivation. This is what skaters are skating for. This is what they're dying on the ice for. So if Russia is in isolation, um, I think even coaches will start losing their motivation and you know they can switch the shows or something else so we'll see well Mosvina has said that she was going to retire a million and one times but her team's improved more than ever over the last season so do you how long do you expect to see Mosvina uh, in the sport for oh tomorrow is fantastic I hope she stays as long as possible and I see that figure skating keeps her going because when she's there by the boards, when she's there at the rank, she's alive and she's shining and she's so happy. So um, now when Bykova and Kozlovsky left her, she would concentrate on some new teams and probably it will be even like a new challenge for her, right? To show something again, because um, she used to have this algorithm of two top pair mm -hmm. teams uh, skating at her rink, but Something went wrong and Bekova and Mishina did not decide to, did not, you know, they're on good terms, they're good friends. It's just that it didn't work for them. So one had to leave. And I wonder how Tamara will reform um, the, you know, the things that, I, that, are, okay, and now we see I'm tired already, yeah? Uh, at her rink at the moment. Yeah. Well, I think Kostrnaya could also be an interesting personality for Moskvina to take. She is a lot of Naya is such a tough character. It's like if you were the coach, you would not want to work with her. Do you think that she is any more difficult than Trusova? Yes. Because Trusova uh, knows what she wants, Alona doesn't. <laughs> Maybe. But she is more talented than Trusova. Probably, but it was Trusova who got the silver medal, right, at the Olympics. Um, I personally hope that Alexandra would return to sports because she also, like Malinin, probably we didn't enjoy their skating in terms of you know, figure skating, but they, this, uh, the historical things they were doing. And this is what is needed for the sports. The five quad free program from a lady, from a girl. I mean, this is what could attract attention, viewers, uh, YouTube videos. So she could also be an ambassador because more personalities, the better, more historical records, the better. She is uh, pushing the limits the, of the, you know, she, we need her. Alexandra, please come back. Yes. <laughs> well, thank you so much. This was so much fun chatting with you today and we'll have a lot to watch over the coming months. Oh, we're going to be having a good season, hopefully.
Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Thank you so See much. See you, Dave. See you. Bye.